Thank you very much uh, for allowing me to share my thinking today. <laughs> so, voila. <laughs> uh, I, okay. So you're on an incredible journey. And you've taken on a, you've taken on an approach that is so powerful, uh, so powerful. Uh, and 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 it, but uh, because it is so powerful, it, it has to be used with the right uh, precision. Uh, and and so I'm going to talk to you about it from the perspective of how I use Obea. Uh, in my transformation work with companies. Uh, and I'm also going to share with you how Toyota views Obea, which may be different than your understanding, so open your mind and, and receive, uh, because, uh, because I want to talk to you about not where you're at right now, but where you might want to go. Uh, and so, so as you, as you think about the things I'm going to share with you today, um, it, it, there will be things to challenge your thinking because that's what I do. Uh, and, uh, and, and I want, I want you to kind of, uh, just, just as we like to say, Hanse, deeply reflect on, uh, on, on the subject matter that we are tackling today. Not many people are doing this. And so I was quite uh, I was quite excited to come and visit you and see what, what you have done, and you are doing such great things. So let's talk a little bit about Obea, okay? All right, so um, real quickly, just in, in the event, uh, you, you want to follow some of my muses. Uh, that I, I am on Twitter, so uh, Lean Leader Way. I oftentimes take little things like this and put little thoughts out. Uh, and then my phone number, should you need it. Um, okay, so the things that we're going to cover today. Uh, what is an obeya? Because that's just like a new word since, since uh, you hear control room. Uh, uh, and, and with that meaning comes, comes a holistic understanding of what it is. Uh, Obea and how it can possibly help you develop your culture. You know, one of the, the, um, the Rosetta Stone or the, uh, the, uh, 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 the chalice that we all seek in our quest is the lean culture, right? A totally engaged culture where every day is better, every, every tomorrow is better than yesterday. And, and so that is really what we want to create and why we would want to know Bea. Uh, we also want to talk about, uh, and this has been a discussion I've had with several, several of the leaders the, uh, yesterday and today, uh, the leadership gap, the availability of, of leaders uh, compared to the need for leaders, and how can we use Obea as part of our leader, leadership development strategy? Uh, and how can it be used to accelerate that leadership development strategy? So I'll talk a little bit about that, although I could probably talk for days on that, as, you, as, as uh, Sivan and, 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 and Denny mentioned. Uh, I'm going to talk about the types of Obea at Toyota, uh, because Toyota is my standard. Uh, so I want to explain how we see it, how we use it, how we manage it. Uh, for, as a consideration, and then I'll talk to you how how you might want to get started if you if you've not currently on your journey uh, and obey is not part of your journey. Where would you get started if you are on your journey? Uh, where should you consider adding additional effort in in that journey? So, uh, and then last, and then I'm going to talk about how to organize uh, the obey based on purpose uh, and most importantly for flow. And lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about the things that are most important to you. So, so what is an obeah? Uh, it, right, quite frankly, it, it means big room. It is one of those few things culturally that come from the Japanese culture because most of the living rooms or living areas in, in, in Japanese houses 
uh, for, for, for centuries all had a common area. And sometimes you slept there, you, you, communi- you communed there. And so it, it was a room without a lot of extra rooms. Uh, and it would be this big room where everyone would come together. And that culture transferred into the professional setting. So the interesting thing about it is that many people who often visit Toyota, if they go to Japan and go to Toyota City uh, and they, they, they visit the corporate offices, they're quite shocked at the lack of offices, our traditional offices. Uh, most of the management team uh, works together, it liter- literally works together in a large room where they can see each other and communicate together and, and collaborate together. Um, it, it, many years ago, there was a television show that used to be called WKRP in Cincinnati. I don't know if you remember this, but there was a character that was name was Les Nesman, and Les always wanted his office, so he would put a tape on the floor, you know, that was supposed to be his office for his sales group. So if you wanted to come see Les, you had to come in, and if you tried to just walk up to him, he'd make you go back out and come through the little tape door, you know, the invisible office. Uh, and, and sometimes it's that way in the corporate headquarters, just because uh, you can see the chairman of, of uh, Toyota uh, Corporation doesn't mean you can just walk right up there and say, hey, sir, can I ask you a question? Um, so you, there's usually a barrier of, of an administrative assistant that kind of says, uh, do you have an appointment? But the fact that we're all in the room together uh, allows us to hear each other. It allows us to learn quicker, especially on the leadership development. And they brought that concept over originally uh, in the research and development in engineering uh, when Toyota established its uh, research and development center. So, so the birthplace of Obea outside of corporate offices was really in engineering. And then interestingly enough, then it transferred into sales. And the reason why they needed it in sales was because they were competing with Honda and everything. Uh, and they weren't doing very well on the J.D. Power Award, okay? And so they needed a room that they could organize around the entire customer life cycle experience. And so they needed to grasp the situation. They needed to see a flow down of how are we doing? What do the customers care about? How are we providing that value? And how well are we doing? And so it started from the the design view all the way around through the entire customer purchase and, and loyalty experience. And so the whole room showed that experience. And, and then after that, we kind of transferred it into manufacturing. So. Uh, it worked so well, it started to, it started to become uh, a, a staple of the operations. Nowadays, nowadays the, the Obeo concept is fully deployed in many areas of Toyota, which I will share with you today. Uh, the biggest thing about it is that, that those off, the, the Obeo has no barriers to collaboration. So the spirit of the Obeo is collaboration. And so, so if, and so that is what we are looking for uh, from a mindfulness perspective when we, when we, when we establish an obeya. And, and so you will not find very many cubicles or, you know, of course you'll have some offices to do some, you know, discussion and counseling, but, uh, but, but you really won't see like everybody having their own little office. So uh, there's a time and a place for that, but I always think of it about as, you know, being a coach. You know, where is the coach's job? You know, is where the game's being played, right? Uh, But there are times when you need to talk to people in your office and plan and stuff like that. But 80% of the time, you're in the obeya. You're in you're in the management gimbo, right? So uh, that's what we what we normally see. And you've known about obeya all your life. The most famous obeya in the in the universe, right? What is this? It's the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, my Obea manager in Cleveland, she, she, she gave me the entire nomenclature of the Enterprise. I'm like, you knew that too well. So, uh, and, and so you've got the Obea president, Captain Kirk. Uh, you have the Obea team. <laughs> but why is that important? They're going where no one has gone before. The need for... <laughs> You know, the, it being the first of, of the obeas to be presented, 
Uh, but more importantly, if you're going to go there, you might want to know uh, what's going on. Right. You want to see the Klingon ships coming up. Right. Might be something you don't want to be hiding in your office when it happens. Right. Uh, so so critical information, co collaboration and um, and 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 decision making is happening there. Uh, and yet we have young leaders down here that are getting the benefit of being around senior leaders dealing with and, and solving problems. There might be a lesson there. OK. What is this? Okay, if this was the most famous obeya in the universe, this is the most famous obeya on the planet, which is connected to the universe, right? So why is it important that, that NASA has this mission control? Is it proper problem awareness? Is it to be able to respond to problems quickly? Okay, is it, is it to make sure that the plan for the trajectory of where we're going and the vision of where we're going that we're achieving it, right? And that we can head off little problems very quickly. That's the spirit of Obeah. okay? So what's my background in, in Obeah? Other than my Toyota background, I lived and breathed it for years. So I, I come from a special forces background. Uh, no, I'm not a Navy SEAL. I am a Green Beret. Uh, <laughs> just a little rounder green beret today. Uh, uh, so, so for those of you old enough to know John Wayne, raise your hand. Okay, the original green beret. So, so we're the special forces and we were the guys that went into Afghanistan and rode on horseback and everything else. But my job was strategic management and planning. And so it was very important when I had teams in danger, as you know from the, the, the news recently, of the, four, of the four soldiers who, who died uh, in Niger. It's very important that we have proper problem awareness and that we can respond quickly to problems. That's the spirit of Obeah as well, right? So, so this was my world most of the time. So, so the other thing that we're gonna talk about today is that, that, that there's an Obeah for every level, okay? So what you generally are going to see is different types, and we're going to talk about different types of Obeah. And by the way, uh, we, you, will have a, you will be able to get a copy of this presentation, use it for to lie in the bottom of your birdcage or whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, so, so of course we have a global Obeah for, for, the, for, the, for the management system for, because Toyota's got you know, operations in 170 different countries in the world. But probably our biggest primary purpose for a global OBEA is really for the global launch of vehicles. Uh, so what we call the major model changes. So there's a lot of marketing involved. There's a lot of uh, engineering that's involved. Uh, there is the, so we have to kind of manage that process uh, across the entire world because we don't just introduce a new Camry in the United States, okay? Uh, when they introduce a new Camry, it goes everywhere. So, uh, so right now, so the Global Obey is really about synchronizing operations for flow and to get that value out with velocity, okay? Now, probably one of the biggest struggles we have when we do this is, is IT operability, so that is go that's always a challenge. Uh, but, we, but we're trying to synchronize, you know, the flow of information and material worldwide to, 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 to basically uh, make sure that the product gets to the customer and everything's lined up. And, of course, you know, that's probably like herding rabbits, but we give it a try. Um, so right now, the biggest effort right now for us is around what's called uh, the Toyota New Global Architecture. So that is going to involve a 95% redesign of the Camry and the other platforms, and it will all be based on the human anatomy. And so that literally fits you like a glove. Uh, and so the, now the car is going to wrap around you, and then, then, we will, then the redesign is all about what makes it safer when you're comfortable and you're set up for attention. Uh, so that's the biggest global launch effort right now that Global Obeas are, are involved in. Uh, the second one that's the most common you will see in Toyota is called a business process Obea. And the reason why this is important is the flow in the layout essentially mimics the flow in the layout of the process. 
So you will have a business uh, executive office uh, OBEA, business process OBEA. You'll have an OBEA for sales, like at Toyota Motor Sales. Uh, you'll have business process OBEA for engineering and research and development. And then you'll have the business o o uh, process OBEA for manufacturing or operations. So they all look a little different, but they all conform to the same spirit. And uh, so, so, so it, it, they will all f mimic the flow of whatever the activity is that, that, uh, that it's dedicated to. So, and then lastly, probably the ones that you may be familiar with are what, what, what we call the war rooms. Uh, but these are called focused obeas. Uh, and generally speaking, they are where the team solves problems. So that's part of our engagement strategy. Uh, so we have, then these are, these are very different, and, but, the, but normally what they're focused on is one single activity. And so the entire uh, story of that team's uh, problem solving or Kaizen activity is generally dedicated to that room. Uh, so we'll generally have some, uh, it, one point that's part of our management system is called floor management and development. That is how the, the, the floor management system works, uh, and it, it is its own OBEA. Uh, we also have uh, the team problem solving rooms. Uh, normally that's inside of the uh, uh, FMDS room, the floor management development room. And then we have very special management driven study groups. And a lot of times it'll be problem solving, but it has a strategic nature, much at the level of your projects uh, in your OBEA. Uh, but they're more designed, the projects themselves are designed to develop leaders, to develop thinking. So the, the word Jishikan means study group. And so we use a problem or a project to develop people. Uh, and that's the primary purpose. Uh, and then uh, lastly, you'll see the departmental Hoshin as well. So uh, everybody with me? How's my French? <laughs> okay, so really the, the, uh, the theory is behind the Obey is pretty simple. Dedicate the space and the time, and I know that struggle, you've got to struggle there in healthcare, but dedicate the space and the time uh, in, in, to coordination and problem solving, and organizational barriers will be minimized. And, and so that's what we, that is really the spirit of, of, of the OBEA. Uh, so why would you want to establish an OBEA? Um, what do you notice, real quick? Another look? Uh, I made somebody famous here today. <laughs> what'd you, what did you see? You, you, you saw the cones, didn't you? Okay. There's a, there's a lesson behind that. Yes. What did you notice? Before we could talk about why you would want to establish an OBEA, we got to talk about the operating system behind the OBEA because it really is a system. And this is it. So I'm going to have to. I'm going to recommend that when when uh, Sylvain does his new uh, dashboard, he, there'll be a dashboard over here with nothing, and a dashboard with just an engine service light on, because because what is the engine service light? That's the thing you need to pay attention to, right? Versus all the other stuff, which is which has an effect of something that's psychologically and cognitively called information blindness. You notice this, this becomes kind of something in the background, right? And we need to leverage our understanding of how the human mind works to make the OBEA work more effectively. So, so the thing you must first understand and what this picture tells you is you see the exception, not the rule, don't you? Okay? That is key to understanding how Toyota manages its entire business. Because verse, management by objective, I know I'm in a business school, okay, versus management by exception. The entire Toyota business system is based on management by exception versus management by objective. We do have some objectives, but it's not how we run the business. That's why we have something called Toyota Business Practice. It's, it's our management system, and it's based around problem solving. 
How often have you ever heard a company that can explain their entire management system, management by exception, respect for others, continuous improvement, solve problems? That's it. Thank you very much. See you later. You know? <laughs> Uh, and so the difference in management by objective, it tends to sometimes go toward command and control, okay? Whereas management by exception is, is based on standards and what we're doing was, is when the exception occurs, you are solving problems to return to the standard. So the entire um, cycle of the business in Toyota starts with what we call SDCA, which uh, I hope this isn't a flip chart marker. Okay, it starts with establish standards. Standard, do, check, adjust. Okay, there is a symbiotic relationship with PDCA because it takes place within here. The first thing Toyota does all across the world if that sets up a plant is establishes standards. And you'll spend days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks getting all work is highly standardized as to content sequence timing and outcome. Um, so respect to Dr. Steven, Steven Spears who understood that. Uh, and so this is our norm. And so when there is an exception to that norm, we want to know it. So the next cycle is to problem solve to return to the standard. This is where we focus. And only when you've reached stability in the standard, do you go to the next phase, which is Kaizen the standard. This takes place at the work level. This takes place at the, at the process level. This takes place at the system level. And it takes place at the management system level. Hoshin is management Kaizen. You cannot do Hoshin from Toyota's perspective until you have standards and basic stability. Just let that sink in. Han, Han say for a moment. That is our cycle. I needed to explain that because we have an entire network, so if the obeya is the brain, where's the nervous system? Anybody ever heard of this word? Andon. It means signal. So in Toyota, across the entire enterprise, anytime there's a, an exception to the standard, a non-standard condition, every team member can, can reach behind them, pull a cord, push a button, or hit a button on a keyboard and set off an and on. And we have an infrastructure to support that, which is a little bit different because it's very difficult to support this. So we end up having to have a structure which is a team-based structure. Team leader with a rough ratio of one to five. Now we have to free those people up by eliminating waste in the organization solving problems. Uh, so, and then the group leaders, the supervisor level uh, is essentially a one to five ratio. He has a team that consists of the supervisor and five team leaders. The key here is we have to train our team members as if they're going to be the CEO of the organization because Toyota only promotes from within. And so we'll hire people in to be a team leader or a group leader from college, then we send them to the shop floor for a while. So even if you don't come up through the team member ranks, you will go to the floor and we'll bring you back up because you have to be brought into our culture. So the nervous system, the reflexive nerves of the brain of our obeya is the andon system. 
okay? And the motor nerves of our system are our standards. So if we work to standards, it's not a control, there's passive control in that process. More importantly, we have a way to compare to find opportunities to improve because we have a stable platform for doing that. So that explains why we organize like we do, establish standards, problem solve to return to the standard, stabilize the standard, Kaizen the standard. And once you Kaizen the standard, you notice the cycle comes up, why? Because that's now the standard. So, one more thing. <laughs> There's always room for Kaizen in coordination, collaboration, communication. Would you agree? And everybody said amen. A little bit of church today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, so the Obea does accelerate lean culture. So I'm going to touch just a little bit on that briefly, uh, just so that we, you know, we can say everything you just saw helps with lean culture. Remember, every time we go solve a problem with a team member, we get an opportunity to introduce them to our culture. Every time we Kaizen with, with a team member or a team, we have an opportunity to promote our culture. The, bit, the reason why we need to do that is we, especially if you've been through a transition, is we've got to regain mutual trust. And the best way to do that is to solve problems together. Agreed? There you go. So it, you didn't know this was going to be interactive, did you? <laughs> okay, so the, the other part of that is that we are, the reason why the Obey is such a critical part of your lean transformation and culture building is we are hardwired to socialize. In fact, when people stand off by themselves and don't socialize, we think they're a little weird, don't we? Yeah, so, so neurologically, our brains are literally built for socialization. And so we need a way to satisfy that need for socialization. In fact, I have a social psychologist that I work with that, that, that uh, is, is part of trying to establish an internet-based uh, wine uh, lessons learn group, a network of wineries. Uh, and, and he says, you know, I started studying just when we started getting grumpy. And what we noticed was when we didn't meet together as a team, regularly when we started to travel and we could only meet like every three or four or five or six weeks six weeks was the magic number at six weeks everybody was ill at each other because they didn't feel like they were being listened to because they lost the ability to to communicate both verbally and non-verbally and the, it's the non-verbal piece that we were missing sometimes in emails or conference calls we're hardwired so we can look at each other. Most of the information in communication is going to be because we're looking at each other, we're saying words, we're reading the body language, right? So, so we have to satisfy the need. To, and the other thing is when you're going through a transformation, don't you want to know what, you, don't you want to see that you're not in there by yourself? And sometimes with lean tools, like building lean cells and stuff like that, we oftentimes sit people out by themselves to do lean stuff. And there's no, there's, there's no spinal cord to come back to the brain to say, here's what I learned today. So there's no way to recognize that. The, the bon coup, right? So uh, a little bit of day at a time, right? <laughs> so, so, so the other thing about culture, is if, you, if you've read Edgar Schein's uh, studies on culture, you know to have a culture, the gateway to culture is language. So oftentimes, I will use unique language. I do use some Japanese words to create a unique language for the obeya and for the transformation. Uh, and so we, we build a new language to accelerate our culture. And then, so the gateway to culture is language. And now we can share that language and that thinking with others. Um, and, and, and the other thing is you've got to have ceremonies. We have to have rituals. Uh, you, you have to... You, you have other things you have to do, even if they're silly, that, that you know you have culture if people who are new come to watch you and they think you're weird, right? Okay, so if you're not weird enough, you don't have culture yet. <laughs> so, so, so building a good lean culture is, you know, how quickly can you get weird uh, to the outsiders, right? 
but that's kind of key to culture. So the obeya accelerates that process. And if we have a chain of obeyas, we can, that's how we get that deployed. So, so one of my, I had a lucid moment. You know, I, I think I drank two smart waters today, so I'm supposed to be really smart. Um, so what I know, <laughs> you drink it too, right? <laughs> okay, so every time we get together in the obeya and speak the language of the Toyota way, or the Obeya way, okay, and practice our routines for daily planning, management, problem solving, or when we gather to hold each other accountable to our shared expectations. Cultures have shared expectations. Um, then as leaders, and, and then also don't forget sharing and reflecting on your learning as leaders, we are creating a lean culture. And then as leaders, we can take that culture to the Gimba. Agreed? That's one of those, I had my deep moment. So, um, so, so how can we also, ex yeah, also accelerate our leadership development? Well, the, the opportunity to bring people into the OBEA, our leaders to work in the OBEA and, and be part of our, our, our OBEA network, they're learning from the masters. You know, they're hearing how the CEO thinks, how they make decisions, how the senior leadership staff prioritizes. How would you do that if you were just a team leader on the floor and you never had a place to come learn how leaders lead? And so if you do your obeya correctly, you should have a bench strength, a deep bench strength of future leaders in your organization. And so that's my challenge to you because as, as Mr. Cato would say, the lean improvements depend on the creative efforts of people led by managers, well-trained managers to our culture, and, the, and natural work team leaders with an extreme attention, I always love that word, to the details of executing daily management techniques. Okay, it's a mouthful, but he's Japanese and he can do that. The sad thing is that most of us are in our jobs 10 years before we get our first leadership development training. And when you do good, it's probably some human resource thing that tells us we're not, what we're not supposed to do. You know, right? Everybody shake your head. Okay, so, so that's kind of a sad statistics. We are in the university, so I had to throw some statistics up there. Um, so we wait too long to, to train our leaders. The other thing, we, we, we will say, hey, Savan, you're a sharp guy. You know what, I got an opportunity for you. I want you to go do this little startup over here. And then, then we, we send them off to do that and, and lead, but they get disconnected. They get expatriated, right? Uh, sometimes we can get expatriated in the same building. Amen? Amen. So, so, so too many times our leaders are left to figure it out on, them, on their own. And the obeya in its different form gives them an opportunity to ask questions, check thinking, you know, learn, like I said, from the masters. And even when the masters make mistakes, they get to learn from the masters' mistake, right? So, so and the last thing I'll say about the principles of, of, of the obeya, according to Casey Nang, former director of uh, Toyota Manufacturing, uh, man, uh, Toyota motor manufacturing in Australia is that essentially the Obeya must hold to the rules of the two pillars of the Toyota production system. First and foremost, information must flow without error. So if information must flow, you cannot accept, make, or pass a defect in any form. Anybody in here get a defective information this week? Okay. All right, and, and the other thing is that we deliver the information where it's needed, when it's needed, in the amount that's needed. So we don't want to have the dashboard that Savan showed earlier with all of that information. We need to see the exception. The exceptions, when they come on and get our attention, that's just in time information. And those are the two principles that we have to, we have to adhere to if we're going to do this the Toyota way. So where do we start? Here's where I'm probably gonna challenge you a little bit. Okay, um, Mr. Cho once said that brilliant process management is our strategy. 
So if you're going to have a strategy room, we, we focus our strategy room around brilliant process strategy, okay? Because we want to get brilliant results from ordinary people. We build our plants in places like Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, West Virginia, Texas, the, you know, rice farm environment in Toyota City in Japan, you know, far from the big metropolises, where you find ordinary people, okay? Um, and, 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 and that's what we want. We want ordinary people to, the craftsmen of ordinary people to be able to, to do great things. So, so we will get brilliant results from ordinary people. They manage brilliant processes. Where we see, when we observe our competitors often get ordinary or worse results from having brilliant people managing broken processes. Again, Amen. I'm going to get you guys to say amen before it's over with. <laughs> so, so generally, our, our establishment, both the transformation and the obeya reflects trying to establish brilliant processes. So generally speaking, how many of you are familiar with this image, the house of TPS? So if you're going to build a house, what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you do? The foundation. No, you get a blueprint. You know that. <laughs> So, so the blueprint is the plan. So what we're saying is your hotion, your strategy is to build a perfect house, right? Because that's what the blueprint is for, right? So what we do in the hotion, the strategy in the first couple, two, three years is to build a perfect house. Then what we do with the house after that is your next strategy, right? So generally speaking, when I'm working with my transformation clients, we start with visual management in building our house, and we generally do that in building a foundation of basic stability and reliability in man, machine, material, methods, mother nature, what we call the five M's, okay? Um, and so we generally are going to focus around process stability. We're going to focus around process stability, process stability, process stability, and process stability. Standards, right? Uh, then we're going to focus on problem solving around process stability. Then we're going to focus on work standards to achieve process stability. Okay, and then lastly, well, we customers like for us to do what they want us to do, so we have to focus on schedule attainment, right? So, so that's where I, I generally focus my, my clients. So our obeas reflect that, that effort. That's our first strategy probably what we're going to spend about the next six to nine months on. Okay, then after that, we move into level production, loading, standardization, resource standardization, uh, and then true Kaizen. Uh, so there we're start, we need to see things in our obeas that tell us what should we be working on, level loading, uh, leveling resources, uh, and, and standardization and Kaizen, how are our resources doing? And then, probably in the next nine-month period or so, uh, we'll focus on what we call full SD, SDCQ, S, I used to do this just like this, you know, uh, SDCQ, uh, DCPM, uh, which is safety, quality, delivery, cost, productivity, and morale. Oh, we have to add lead time, okay? Uh, so, so, and then organizational level problem solving. Here, the problem solving is more about what eats your lunch every day. What are the problems everybody experiences every day? And so it's more work-related, process-related problem solving. Then we're moving up here to standards problem solving. Now we're into organizational problem solving. How well does the operational systems work together? And we need to problem solve to make them more, work better together. And then lastly, then in the fourth stage, we'll, we'll focus on the deployment across the organization you know, kind of the pilot cell process we were talking about, uh, full integration of all TPS systems, as well as working on problems with connections, okay, in the system. So a lot of times, sometimes uh, we talked, I think in the last couple of days, we might have mentioned, you know, the connections. In the early stages, it's, you're building, you know where the connections are gonna be, okay? You're laying the framework, they're in the plan. But, but you, if, if you just work on the, the, if you just try to put the uh, roof up, 
You're just going to crush everybody under it. So in the blueprint, we know where the connections are going to end up. And then when we connect it in up here in the fifth stage, everything runs. The big numbers move. They move the whole time. They just jump off the, off the track when, it, when everything's clicking. So this is generally the process that both I and Toyota use. It's just something for you to think about, okay? So how should your Obeya be laid out? I'm gonna talk about a couple of options there. It depends, right? What's your purpose? So the Obeyas are laid out according to their purpose, whether they're global, whether they're business process, what is the business process, what is the focus Obeya, uh, what should it be? So what you're looking at right here is Toyota Industrial Equipment Manufacturing in Columbus, Indiana. They are a Toyota plant, uh, and that is their Hoshan Connery room. That room is dedicated to what they call uh, uh, K21, their strategy to, for 2021, where they're at now and where they want to be by 2021. And what you will see is, the, is that room is based around a flow and they're complete, just like we talked about in Toyota Motor Sales, a complete customer experience uh, cycle. And so that around that room is every one of these little, these, these little process flows. We call this a customer first flow. Now the customer is the customer, our experience with them, but also the customer is the next process. So we also have a strategy for how to better collaborate between the preceding process and the subsequent process because the next process is truly our customer. You have them too. So on that wall around that room, you see all of the strategies for developing each process to meet the demands that we're gonna, hit, we're gonna meet in 2021. Without, without leaving any process behind. So we refer to, so in the Hoshan room, you could kind of see, you start with the Hoshan vision, K21. Uh, the Hoshan room is, is dedicated to developing and monitoring and managing and, in, and, and bringing to operationalization the, the Hoshan's vision, which is over here with, with Shannon. Okay, then after that, each department, each department interprets how they can support that Hoshan. And so their job is they have a board in their office or in their little Obeya, and, and each function in that department has a flow down of Hoshan support strategies. And one of the requirements is that everybody in that department has, has a project or an initiative that's connected to the Hoshan. So we tie it up two levels every time. And so this happens to be production control right here with Shannon since he manages production control. And then daily operations, this is the daily, this is the operations Obeya here at team. You notice there are not a lot of chairs there, just a few tables because it is a working area. We're in and out of that all day long. First thing in the morning until the end of the day. It is not a static room. It is a, it's the coach's sideline. It's where we coach the game. And so we are problem solving and this, this whole room is based on Toyota business practice. It is a problem solving room, but it's a pro system level problem solving room, uh, process connection problem solving room. So we want to see the exceptions. We want to see the orange cones. So that's where we're going to spend our attention on the shop floor. Uh, supervisors and team leaders have an obey of their own and it's a focus obey for their shift and even there they have safety quality delivery cost productivity and morale right now human resource development is the focus if you can see the star uh, and it's a flow down as well so supervisors must have goals for safety quality delivery cost productivity and morale and and support and facilitate their teams to achieve those goals every day. And it's also the place where we can look at trends. So the supervisor is responsible for looking at trends and, and problem solving to meet the goals. So if supervisors are doing what managers used to do, what do managers do now? 
Just something for you to think about. The one thing you don't see here is there's another level. At the team and the team leader level, there's, we have a different form of an obeya. It's a focus obeya, but it's all around creating the perfect conditions for daily or shift work. And so we control how those perfect conditions in a concept called rohin jokin, which means everyday team leaders must create the perfect condition for work. Before the beginning of the day, and throughout the entire day, from equipment to standards to tooling and things we use, okay? So everybody has a different function in this process as well. Are you still with me, people? Okay, I, do I need to throw the orange cones back up? Okay, so you, you see the visualization of the Hoshin, and you, you see the major breakthrough measures that we need to achieve here. And the other thing they'll do is, although we have all of these True North initiatives, we're only going to prioritize about three or four of those. And then the next year we'll move our priorities, and the next year we'll move the priorities. We're not going to try to do all of those things at once, like some people try to do. Okay? Uh, so, you've heard this a little bit. It's called the Toyota T, a mile wide and an inch deep, and an inch, deep, an inch wide and a mile deep. Well, so Toyota looks at that, from the Obeya flow perspective, it is a process by process Hoshin target with the customer first value creation business flow. So just like you saw around the room. So it's more about process to process and how well we're doing that. And then the next thing is the actually the T part of it is the flow down of grasp the situation, what is the goal. So we'll normally have the business process trends gaps, analysis, plans, actions, and results, all connected together. So you don't have to run around the room to show me. Okay, so, so Hoshin target, we have, when we set Hoshin targets for this process, okay, let's just say, you know, for, for engineering, uh, what it will have is both a quantitative and a qualitative uh, Hoshin statement. So you'll know what target you're shooting for as well as what is the end state, the qualitative end state for that. So that's, we like to call that the big so what. So when you're talking to somebody about this metric, you not say, this is where we're going and here's why we need to get there, right? Sometimes I like to include, here's what happens if we do this, here's what happens if we don't do this, right? Uh, and then at the next level, following good PDCA, we need to go to grasp the situation so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do grasp the situation. What are the trends? What are our performance against the goal? Uh, the next, we're going to show the, we're going to break down the gap and we're going to show what we need to be working, what problem we're going to tackle. And so that ends up being our analysis and plans. And then our action status, what actions are we doing? What's your timetable? One of the biggest things, the timetable, okay? Uh, so what is your timetable for implementing? Uh, and in our world, we have very, very restrictive timelines. Uh, and then, then what's the status and then results tracking. So what do we have here? We have where we're going. We have where are we at? What's the ideal situation? What is the current situation? What are our plans? Our plan, do, check, act and adjust. And then results tracking to see when we're going to share thinking. So it's a little bit different flow. But that's what you were seeing in the, in the Toyota room. So you, you see that here. Safety, quality, delivery, delivery, cost, productivity, and morale in here. And then you see the flow down. Here's where we're at. Here's where we're supposed to be. And then you'll see here's the plan, the do, the check, the act, the adjust. A little bit different. So that's how we connect it. We always make sure in every activity, we always connect our activity two levels up. So we call that line of sight. So every time we do something, every time we problem solve, every time we do Kaizen, we have to identify what is our role, what is our responsibility, what is my department's responsibility, and then how does it support the ultimate goal? So every time we go through problem solving, like I said, it's an opportunity for us to tell us, here's where, here's where the company's going, and here's how we're going to help them get there. 
So, so here's a, an example of Toyota's operations, uh, Obea. In here, you'll see all the little indicators. We happen to use some interesting things, a little bit different than what you use. We do use red, amber, green. If you're green, you're clean. We hardly look at you. You know, uh, I think one place as I saw uh, maybe today was uh, too much green. You know, <laughs> the Japanese, too much green, you know. Uh, so we have a round circle that's green, big round circle. Uh, we'll have a yellow triangle, and then we'll have a big red X, you know. Uh, the difference is when you have management by exception, red X's are what you're looking for. So rather than it being punitive, one of the things we need to do in our cultures is that that is our opportunity because you're focusing on the red X's. Now, we do have something called double red X. And that just means you've got a problem that's, that's continuing to trend in the other direction. So we're going to stop the line and we're going to work on that. And that's usually we're going to put, we're going to, we're going to stop other things and we're going to, we're going to focus on that till we get it back, what we call leveled up. Uh, does that kind of help you? You see how, but one of the things you'll notice, one, I used to have a picture right here on one of my other ones, is on that table is a box of Crayola crayons. That's because it's, it's very sticky in there. You know, we do everything with, with Crayolas and, you know, there, we do have printouts in here, but most of our daily management awareness, is, we do by hand. And the, the cognitive psychology behind that is called disfluency. Because we have to slow down and we have to work with that information tactilely, it makes us slow down our thinking and focus. Whereas, like, as I said, most of the time, this system is based on heuristics and it just kind of runs itself. But when we're going to make changes or we have to be accountable for our performance, one way to be accountable is going up to that chart and knowing you're going to have to put a little red X up there when yesterday and the day before that it was a green circle. You know, it tends to get your attention. So that way we get, we get involved psychologically and cognitively with what's going on in that area. What do you think? Make you think? Okay. So the other common concept that Art Smalley and I, who's one of my, who has been my partner for several years, uh, is, is everything in Toyota is pretty much a funnel. It, the funnel may go this way, the funnel may go this way, it may go this way and this way. Okay, but it's still a funnel. We start with the vague problem, and little by little we break down that problem. And then we go into root cause analysis, we go back out to the funnel again, we break down the root cause analysis, and then we, then we get ready to develop countermeasures, we go divergent again, we brainstorm ways we can solve the problem, and then we gotta select the problems, analyze, prioritize, and decide on what we're gonna do to solve the problem. So it's a series of funnels, and I think that helps you if you understand that this is, this is a funnel. Make sense? So that's what you're seeing here. This is actually my friend, uh, Jeremiah Duncan. Uh, if you're in America next, next spring and you wanna come down to North Carolina and watch me and uh, Jeremiah will be presenting on FMDS. Uh, but this is his board and, and it's vague here, more detailed breakdown here, detailed analysis here, plan, do, check, and adjust. And then this is, he's very proud. He just won the silver status award from Toyota. Uh, so most of the gold is in Japan right now. So, so he's, he's very proud of that. So his team is in there now going through and focusing on human resource development. Uh, so that is part of their OBEA. They problem solve exception management. Uh, let's see. So this is the eye chart for today. Can everybody see this? Okay, but this is more for you to have in your packet. And it basically shows from the Hoshin Initiative to KPIs and sub-KPIs, there's yours. And then your top five issues. The philosophy in Toyota is don't tackle more problems than you can count on one hand. Uh, did I say something? <laughs> because, we, because if you do that right, then that top five will always change, won't it? But if you try to tackle more, what happens? Nothing. Okay. So just, again, again, just to make you think, right? And then there are the activities and the training around the activities, and then we're always results tracking. And at the, at the bottom, what you might have saw is a little, little holder for a binder. 
In that, in that binder is what we call books of knowledge. Every activity done for human resource development, as long as that department's been working on it, every A3, every problem solving, every Kaizen is in that book so that you can go back out of respect, study the things that people did before you. And you get to add to that story. Okay? So that's there for mostly for a reference. So this is a business process, Obeya. In here you have the strategy, but you also have daily operation. One of the things that's kind of important we'll talk about is the cadence management. Um, sometimes the layout that I normally, I call this the front window view of an Obeya in operations management. We always want to know what's going on right now. And the ancillary, the funnel information comes in toward the center. The concept's called center line concept. So generally, the biggest in here, the, in, in an operations obey, the biggest thing is what, what's going on right now out in the operations. So me as an operational leader, I can step into that room in one glance. I know everything that's going on in the enterprise, everything that's going on in the, in the, uh, in the operation. Okay? We update this, this operation every hour. Supervisors that come up and post, uh, whether they're green and they're clean, whether they're, whether they're having a problem that they can recover from, uh, or whether they've had a problem that's, that they cannot recover from. And we'll start working that problem right then, because our goal is for, them to, for, them, for us to support them in, in meeting their schedule every day. Okay? So whatever it is they promise to do today, we want to help them do that. Uh, so this is the focal point here, the operation status board. Everything else around it, is all the stuff that flows into this area. And then in the back or on the other wall, on the outside of the wall, oftentimes we, ha we have what we call the Hoshin board. So what are we doing in each function? And then what is the flow down? How are we doing? And there's accountability with that. By the way, in, if you're going to transform a, co a culture, one of the biggest things you'll have to do is have peer-to-peer -peer accountability. So we have to use this room for the peer-to-peer -peer accountability. Your culture depends on it. Everybody needs to know what's going on. Everybody needs to know what they're responsible for. Okay? So if you're going to accelerate it. The other thing we work on is something called cadence management in the OBEA. So we don't have static OBEAs. We are in and out of there all day long. It is our brain. So how often do you guys only go to your brain once a month? There you go. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, so, so one of the things, how many people have read the book, uh, The Power of Habit? The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg? Okay, the psychology of habit making. Well, a transformation means you need to change old routines to new routines. So one of the things that I use the OBEA for is to create new habits. So we start our morning, uh, what, there are three things that you need to create a habit or replace a habit, according to, to Charles Duhigg. Number one, you need a cue. Number two, you need a new routine. Number three, you need a reward for following that routine. He uses chocolate, I need to use lean. Uh, okay, so we start every morning with what we call the hot start meeting. And so every, so every uh, center director has to say, I have my, I am off, I am ready for a perfect start. My equipment's good, all my people are here, you know, the process is good, nobody left me a mess, the, the environment is, is perfect, everything is perfect for the start of the day, and the coffee is hot. And tea if you like, okay? All right, so, so the other thing that occurs during that meeting is the senior leadership group has something we call a daily top five. My most senior leader is generally going to have a weekly top five, and he is going to, what he's saying is, I'm going to put my leadership influence toward this top five. Okay? You may have a connection or you may not, but he says, this is my priorities for leadership this week. And then every one of the center directors will also have their, their daily top five. Here's what I'm going to put my leadership influence on. And generally, that top five consists of three basic things during a transformation. System operability, advancing the lean system, advancing the OBEA. Here's what I'm going to do to advance the OBEA today. Uh, critical problem solving around the operability of the OBEA systems. And people development. 
People development is part of our top five. But we're going to use the first two to develop people. Got it? So we develop people through critical problem solving and helping them to advance the system. So, so we, we all start with a daily top five. At the end of the day, we report out on our top five accomplishment, and you can, there's only two colors. You're either red or green. Peer-to-peer accountability, right? And so everybody wants to be green, but sometimes you're red. So when we, if you're red, you lead with your reds. Because if you did not accomplish what you committed to today to advance our transformation, then you must have a recovery plan. So you got to brief that recovery plan. Number two, throughout the day, daily management, that's the routine. Uh, we normally have some, think of this from an operation standpoint, but uh, the first thing we're going to do around 9 o'clock is we're going we're gonna to look at level loading the schedule, level loading the resources, see what tasks need to be done, what critical projects need to be done, who's doing it, have we level loaded, is, is anybody overloaded, has anybody got capacity, uh, where, where are we constrained for capacity, and then we, and we level that out. Um, and we normally do that three days out before something, we're going we're gonna to put the plan together for it. Then we check the conditions to make sure it's perfect. Then we do 10-day loading. We literally take day by day for 10 days, and we level load that based on activities. If you look at it, urgency and level of complexity. And then the resource, the capability to solve the problem. Uh, and, then la- and then midday, we have kind of our halftime, a midday huddle. Are we on track? Does anybody need help? Where, where are we behind? Uh, is anybody experiencing any system level problems? We want to put resources. And we always ask here, who's got capacity? You know, so we can help each other out. And then lastly, we generally are going to have a plan. F- we look at our material support, and we call that a, a plan for every person. And then lastly, at the end of the day, we review status. Uh, we're going we're gonna to schedule accomplishment. You're either green or red. Uh, A3 report out. We report out our A3s in stages. So they're generally throughout the day, they're, the A3s are maturing over the next three to five days, and we're reporting out our progress on those A3s. Uh, and then there's a PDCA system review. How can we make the system better for tomorrow? And then a plan for every person, we look at who's engaged, who's not as engaged, and if they're not engaged, what's your concern, what's your cause, what's your containment, and how will you check? So, so we proactively get, look at engagement, especially in the transformation, and we proactively uh, work that to get that engagement. Concrete countermeasures. Uh, so gives you a little bit of a look at our 10-day uh, leveling plan, but we look at this every day. We look 30, 60, 90 days, what's coming in. We break that down into 10-day activities and balance the load. And then three days out before we do something, we lock it down. And we, at that, that point, we're preparing for that third day. And what we're doing today, we planned three days ago. Now, I know you... <laughs> So, so just think about that. If you come into today with a 70% plan that you've planned, it's better than showing up today and have to plan the whole thing, right? It's never a perfect 100% plan. It is we are thinking about three days from now. And what can we do to make three days better than we would have been without thinking about it? Does that make sense? Plan, then what? Do, right? Then check and adjust. So that means we actually have to do planning. <laughs> and lastly, notice how low tech this is. We got post-it notes. Uh, by, I, by visiting uh, the R&D Center at Goodyear, I learned how to print on post-it notes. Uh, but you can see everything that's happening from the time a sales order comes in till we get the cash, that's called the value stream, uh, and the information flow, and we have standards for that. So when an order comes in, or if something comes in, how, long sh- how many days should it be in green before it becomes something else? And what are we looking at? Are we looking at anything in the greens? No. What are we looking for? We're looking for this guy right here that's what? He's in orange now. Or for this guy that's over in red. Managing the exceptions. 
So that, by the way, you, just on that wall right there, you're probably looking at a half a billion dollars worth of uh, revenue. Managed by a low-tech thing. But guess what they had before we did this last week? Nothing. It got lost. So I can't say this on camera, but we recovered. We found a lot of money last week. Uh, and the other thing about this, this is a, the Obeya is a whole brain system. So you can't just say facts. You just can't produce, show data. It has to be artistic. This is very artistic and tactile. It's whole brain thinking. It's big. You've got to take it in through your peripheral vision. Uh, so your obeya must be whole brain. And one of the other things that helps with your whole brain is turn what you're doing in the obeya into a good story. So obeya leaders are good storytellers. Okay? And, and I've always believed everybody deserves a war story. So, so one of the things to make this, make it very artistic, get your right brain involved, which we are doing here. Uh, I can't tell you how many times we, we wore out our plotter that day, but we were sketching in everything, you know, and then you're writing down little things on post-it notes, and then you're using your brain spatial uh, uh, capabilities to figure out where things go. That's whole brain. But the, the information on it, you know, is data, right? But then even sometimes we write the data. So if you write the data, how much do you know about it? It's disfluency, right? So remember, the spirit of Obeya and the Kaizen mindset is having a proper awareness of problems and an extremely low tolerance to the current condition is the proper attitude for an obey a leader, and by the way, a lean leader, probably a leader of any kind, right? Does that kind of make sense? So, so lastly, I'm going to kind of wrap it up with some of the benefits. So the obey promotes coordination, strategy, coordination of the strategy, uh, flexibility while leveraging the expertise and supportive teammates from diverse areas. And for those that you know the cognitive science behind it, the only true competitive advantage in diversity is cognitive diversity. Getting people who think differently together. Uh, secondly, Obeya promotes full and effective utilization of resources and talents. Okay? Uh, in order to reach the full potential of the organization, and which is critical if you're going to be a lean organization. A lean organization, by its very nature, is always seeking to achieve its full potential. Uh, the ability to maintain proper problem awareness in real time or near real time. And what good is being proper problem aware if you're not going to do anything about it? So it's also so you can solve problems. Uh, monitor value creation, the flow of value, opportunities, the, the voice of your customer, the voice of the business, the voice of your partners, the voice of your stakeholders, the voice of your people. Uh, listen to team member concerns. On the other way around, the team members get to listen to your concerns. Collaborate and make discoveries. That's a different concept, isn't it? Make discoveries uh, to resolve problems, accelerate leader and team member development together, it accelerates leadership development, it accelerates the culture, and the, effective, the, last, the result of that is that the effective solutions and actions can be developed and implemented quickly. Okay? And value is delivered. This is one I got from Art Byrne, if you're an Art Byrne fan. Lean really is about delivering value with velocity. And so you have to develop every resource to its full potential in order to do that. And that takes focus, right? Now... Up until this moment, have I said, other than maybe pointing at it, anything about main KPIs and all that kind of stuff? Nope. It's different, isn't it? Just something for you to think about. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Don't forget these guys. You have your version of this. The guys that do the work every day. 
If part of your obeya isn't focused on problem solving to help every person that does the work of the organization have a better day tomorrow than they had today, then we're missing the boat. Because believe it or not, for most of you said that you, you struggle with capacity. Guys, this is where your capacity is at right here. And the burdens and the struggles that these guys experience every day. So, with that, talk about timing. Never did blow me a kiss. <laughs> so, thank you for allowing me to share. What questions can I answer for you? I did it in an hour. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Euh, donc, on a dix minutes euh, pour, euh, pour prendre des questions. Je vous rappelle que pour la traduction simultanée, s'il vous plaît, déplacez-vous dans les deux allées euh, pour poser vos euh, questions euh, au micro pour faciliter la, la traduction. Et euh, après ça, on va prendre la pause. Il y aura d'autres occasions là, de, de parler à Sam et au cocktail euh, de la même façon. Donc, euh, qui veut briser, euh, briser la glace et se déplacer? gap between what you describe and what you have been able to achieve with, uh, with this structure and what we have here. Because we have just tried to reproduce uh, with our OBEA rooms, especially the, 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 the tactical one, exactly the, the functional structure that we have. So can you just a little bit go uh, on this idea and to see what, what is the best focus that we should have? What are the objects that we should deal with? At the Focus Obeya? Yes. Okay, two things. Here, process to process connection. Uh, how well, find problems in what you receive as a customer, and out of respect, don't accept it if this isn't perfect for your use. But out of respect, let the preceding process know that there is an error in the information material or what have you and then then work together to solve that problem for both of you okay the other thing what what are the things that your team members struggle with every day and just pick one or two that that you can work together on the key here is problem solve that so that it doesn't come back again Because we love problems, but we want the challenge of new problems every day. So at the focus, the focus obeya, focus on this and this. The connection with the process that, that brings things to you, that, that, that delivers to you, and then work on your process problems. So it's about value stream, about processes. Uh Yeah, it's mostly the, in the value stream, it's mostly about the connection between two processes in the value stream, the one directly connected to you, and then your own process, right? Your own process box, right? How well do you do what you do? What is your cycle time? What is your changeover time? And so forth. So, so focus first on the things that impact you from outside and the things that your people are struggling with every day, and little by little, day by day, all those problems start to go away. That rhymed. That's an important lesson. Presently, plusieurs d'entre vous travaillons sur des représentations de trajectoires clientèle. 
Vous avez déjà cartographié vos trajectoires, donc c'est votre process to process. Donc, à partir de nos trajectoires, on est capable d'identifier notre valeur, nos indicateurs, et là, on devient transversal. Au lieu d'avoir juste dans une direction, on est vraiment sur le focus du client et c'est sur l'ensemble des trajectoires. Donc, on migre tranquillement vers… Mais au début, Marie-Hélène, tu sais, on était en transformation et c'est pour ça qu'on les a mis plus par, par direction. Merci. Oui. Là, je voyais là en français parce qu'on n'a pas tout été en anglais. En japonais? En japonais. <rire> je voulais vous demander à quelle étape vous situez, la, vous allez intégrer les, les notions de judoka, la loi de l'État, euh, les, les cinq S. Est-ce que ça va être à l'étape des focus ou ça va être dans les Kaizen Group? Je Uh, repeat a little bit, yeah. Repeat the end? Not the whole thing, just the major objectives. I would like to know at which level you talk about the little law. Law, thank you. La loi des contraintes. Constraint law. Theory of constraints. Merci. And the five S. Okay, gotcha. You were speaking English the whole time. <laughs> okay. Um, so we introduced, there, there are two conditions that when, when I introduced 5S. Uh, the first time that I introduced 5S is if you have a dangerous environment. Okay. And it's, the reason why we do it is safety. Remember, with any tool, there are only countermeasures to a problem. So you must first have a problem. Otherwise, it won't stick. You'll have to highly manage it. So a very unsafe environment, when do people have accidents? When they're unfamiliar with the environment, when they're unfamiliar with the work, right? So if the environment is dangerous, we will do 5S to create, out of respect, a safe environment. Uh, the other time we introduce 5S is with standards. Uh, so, so the purpose of 5S is to create a visual management tool to see if I'm in my standard. Is my workplace standardized? Do I have what I need? Every, and everything, you know, everything has a place and everything is in its place, right? So I can do my work. Uh, we do not do 5S because everybody says that's the first thing you do, okay? Uh, but that also includes 5S for information as well. Remember what uh, uh, Casey Nung Sensei said, remember the right information at the right time in the amount, right amount, right? It has to, has to be just in time. So, so we introduce 5S and, and the lean tools, the tools are introduced when they're needed. So uh, in 5S, the term is Shitsuki, right? And Shitsuki means self-discipline. So all the old senseis would tell you, you only need to do 4S four, four because the, if you do 4S, well, it self-disciplines itself. But if you try to do it just because it's a tool, then now you have to have the fifth S, which is now you have to manage it instead of it managing itself. So when you have standards, <laughs> you, you, when you have standards, you have to now control, you know, say, what does right look like? C'est bon. On, on va, euh, va s'arrêter euh, maintenant. Merci beaucoup. Puis euh, Sam va revenir à la toute fin.